Good morning, good morning, good morning. And <clears throat> part 10, or in Genesis 3, uh, actually, uh, I forgot to change that. We may, we're probably going to do more verses than 1 through 7. I'll probably change that when I get uh, to the, uh, when I upload it. But that, uh, we'll see how far we get. So, let's start with a prayer. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord, so much for uh, helping us with our uh, learning, that we uh, you help us to uh, understand your word, and to be able to help others to understand and, and to lead others to you, uh, that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And no one gets to, you, uh, gets to the Father except through you. We praise you and thank you, Lord, so much for all you do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, they fought the fall, the fall of Satan and mankind. That's what I named it. And there's still a lot of controversy over exactly when Satan fell. Uh, I believe we don't know the period of time from where we left off yesterday or Friday to today because uh, we really don't know. There's no timing until we get to the kids being born. Uh, I might show you that real quick. We don't even know when Cain and Abel were born, uh, except that. Uh, so the genealogy only shows us I know I got it here somewhere. I think it's on this one here. No, not that one. We'll be, getting, we'll be studying the genealogy when we get to chapter four or five. But either way, uh, it shows that because uh, it only showed the line going to Jesus. And so we don't actually know how many children Adam and Eve had. We know they had, he had, they had at least three uh, because that uh, we know about Cain and Abel and then Cain kills Abel and then they have Seth. And the other thing we know about is Seth was born when Noah was like a hundred and something years old. That's why I wanted to show you. So that uh, we can see that time for them was, was really long. So I'm, I'm thinking that between chapter two, the creation uh, finishing up and where we are right here, it could have been quite a while. It could have been many, 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 many years. But from that standpoint too, <clears throat> This is what I believe is when Satan fell. So uh, I just bring in my regular picture that I have been using, our, our, our picture of uh, the garden. <clears throat> so let's start with verse, uh, let me change to my verses. Okay. And they were both, oh, I'm not starting there. Now the serpent was very, more sub, subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto them, and this, the serpent could speak. One rather interesting uh, point of view. And he said unto the woman, yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now we know Satan was a uh, was a uh, angel originally. And then he fell sometime between chapter two and chapter uh, three here. That's what I believe. Some people try to put it even before Genesis was written. Some people try to put it between uh, verse one and verse two. So uh, we don't know for sure. But I thought I'd just share a few things about Satan and when he fell. Uh, and actually his name before he fell was called Lucifer. Uh, you'll see that name all through the Bible. But here he's being referenced as the serpent. And I believe that Satan was actually indwelling this serpent. We don't know what the serpent looked like. Uh, but most of us believe that it did have legs. Uh, so there was a, uh, it was a regular uh, creature of some sort that could walk on legs. Because what part of his curse is we're going to see uh, <clears throat> here shortly, maybe today. 
uh, he's going to be cursed to uh, crawl on the ground with no legs. And so uh, we know at some point that he probably had legs. We know he was probably very attractive. Is that uh, every time we, we read about uh, Satan, it sounds like that uh, he was the most beautiful of all the angels. <clears throat> And really, too, I might uh, add that uh, uh, snakes in general, uh, some of them are very pretty you know, without the, the, all the colors they have and all the things they have. Uh, it's only because they've, in their fallen state, they're actually aggressive that we worry about them. Uh, but prior to the, prior to the fall, uh, they were docile. Uh, they, they weren't, all the creatures were docile. They were, uh, they didn't want to attack you as we're going to, uh, as it, it points out when we get into some of the studies in Isaiah. When it talks about the Millennium Kingdom, it's going to go back to that way again. And I think I included some verses on that, too. So one of the things to point out, too, is the fact that <clears throat> I don't know how big the uh, Garden of Eden was, but uh, there was a potential for it to be very large. And this tree, there was only one tree that God said that you weren't allowed to eat from. So you got to ask yourself, when Satan was tempting Eve, where was Eve? She was near the tree. Uh, so, and most likely, and Satan noticed that and says, aha, here's my chance to uh, get them to uh, sin. And so uh, the first mistake you might say is, uh, was Eve hanging around the tree too much? Again, I don't know how long it was, how long, uh, but we definitely know that, that Eve and Adam both knew that they weren't supposed to eat from that tree. So let's say it was a few years, just for the sake of argument. Then they, they had plenty of opportunity to walk up to that tree, is what I'm saying. Uh, somehow they were able to resist. It wasn't like the first day that God made the tree, they went up and ate it. <clears throat> At least on the impression I get from reading the Bible. <clears throat> Some other things <clears throat> about snakes that kind of remind us of, of Satan here. He's, uh, it says that uh, he was very subtle. Uh, and that uh, snakes are very, uh, very smooth, uh, uh, very graceful in their uh, motions, very quiet. They're not a, uh, a lot of people have them as pets. So one comment in one of my uh, reference books says that the, the serpent in his uh, idiotic form is not to be thought of as a writhing reptile, uh, but it's because of the effects of the uh, curse. Let me just show you that verse real quick. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, upon the belly shalt thou go, and dust shall they eat all the days of their life. So this is because of what Satan is going to do and, uh, and deceive Eve. But again, as most people would say, why was Eve hanging around the tree? Uh, why was she off doing other things? If you're told not to do something, the, the worst place to be is anywhere near where you're not allowed to be. <clears throat> so it's a, one of the first appearances, uh, uh, Satan was uh, appeared as an angel of light. Paul comments about this in 2 Corinthians 11 and 14. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Uh, so that we know that he was, uh, he also... This is where we get the idea of the, uh, uh, the uh, that were colored in light, that they were clothed in light. He's also referenced as a serpent. So I, this, this term for Satan as a serpent is, is all through the Bible. Uh, and I just thought I'd mention a few of them here. Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. That's in Revelation 12, 9. Uh, and then we jump down to verse 14. And to the women were given two wings of a great eagle, that they should might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, and at times and a half a time, from the face of the serpent. Verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away uh, of the flood. Going over to Revelation 20, verse 2. He laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Uh, that's at the end of the millennium. I mean, that's the beginning of the millennium. Satan will be. Uh... So in Isaiah, is actually where we read about his fall. 
uh, he fell uh, again, no timing factor, but in Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. And I'm also going to talk about some other places that talks about Satan in his fall. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which does weakest the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will send into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. And so that's what he wanted to do. And then we jump down to Ezekiel. Uh, and there's another great passage in there that talks about the actual uh, some attributes about him and his fall. Ezekiel 28, 12. At first, it doesn't sound like this might be talking about a world leader. But as we get, as we read it through, you're going to see that it definitely can't be talking about a human. <clears throat> Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect of beauty. This, this king of Tyrus was actually being driven by Satan, and that's where they get the, uh, uh, that's why he's involved in this particular story. But you can see that uh, most of this passage is going to be talking about Satan. And it starts here where it says, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect of beauty. Thou hast been in Eden. Okay, so the king of Tyre has never been in Eden. This is how we know that it wasn't talking about that actual king, but a reference to who was backing him. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, and the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, and the workmanship of thy tablets, and of thy pipes were prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. <clears throat> I love that passage because it tells us so much there that he was in Eden, uh, that he did have color, he, had, he was somehow colored in light, but different colors. And that he was created. Uh, so those are important aspects, I think, that uh, we need to uh, pick out of that verse. Ezekiel 28, 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. That puts him at the top of the uh, angel order. Cherubs were actually angels that were in charge. Uh, the current uh, angels uh, that we know about, besides Lucifer, that were cherubs, was... Uh, Michael and uh, uh, just drew a blank. Oh, I can't think of his name now. Well, oh, it'll come to me. And I'll, I'll pop it out of the blue. Gabriel, Gabriel. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and so that uh, these chabs are very high. That uh, and it's the only ones that are named. All the other angels are actually. Uh, just angels. They, you never see names for them in particular. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Interesting term. I wonder if that actually means stones of fire. Uh, I somehow believe that uh, every time we see picture, any kind of a uh, representation of, of uh, God, he always seems like he's like a uh, very bright, flaming kind of a uh, uh, vision. It might be kind of manage, uh, his power is so great uh, that uh, he manifests himself uh, as a uh, something all-encompassing like fire. That was perfect in ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. By thy multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinnest. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. That's, that's the verses that really point to Lucifer and his fall. <clears throat> so it's basically pride that uh, he wanted he wanted to be he wanted to be God and uh, 
There's only, there's only one person is God, and everybody else was created by him. <clears throat> So we can see in this passage, the saint was very beautiful to look at. And the typical images of a horned man with a pitchfork uh, is uh, way, way far from his real appearance. He's very attractive. So we can kind of take this that uh, to Eve uh, with her encounter with Satan might have seemed almost uh, a very uh, pleasant experience. And then with his ability to deceive, if one of the when he becomes uh, back, and he indwells uh, the power of the Antichrist, the Antichrist is going to be able to smooth talk his way into anything. So I'm trying to say here, that I don't fully blame Eve when she was being enticed by Satan. She should have stuck to her morals and not, and not have uh, disobeyed God. But I think that many of us have been swayed by uh, uh, things that uh, are pleasant to the eyes. And uh, they call it the pride of... Uh, Oh, there's three of them. There's a verse that's really cool about it. Uh, the three things that get us in trouble. Lust of the eyes, uh, the pride of life. There's a third one. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Uh, I know I'll be saying it. I'll be mentioning that verse here somewhere in here. I remember uh, writing it down. And so I believe that, uh, too, that... Uh, 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 So, uh, we talked a little bit. We see that uh, at some point in, uh, prior to this chapter, Satan fell. So now he's, uh, he's fallen. He's a sinner. Uh, he's a liar and deceiver. Uh, and that uh, he now wants to uh, deceive mankind. And there's a lot of and, I, and I'm one of them. There's a lot of people I think that when, when God created um, Adam and Eve, Satan got jealous uh, that he didn't like the fact that there was somebody because it uh, all through we've already talked about in the first two chapters that God had made us in his image. And I think that uh, Satan wanted that top position and he felt uh, that uh, God had just given it to Adam because he gave him control over the whole earth. And so that it was pride and uh, jealousy, I think, that, that drove Satan to want to be have a higher position than he already had. So, on to verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Okay, that's true. Verse 3. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest you die. Well, it's interesting she said that, because her memory is... This is why I think it might have been quite a while later, uh, or maybe in the conversation with Satan, somehow she thought that uh, God had said, touch it also. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of scenarios in my head. But it's interesting that when you go back to what God said, it was over in Genesis 2.17. Let's just look at it real quick. This is what God said. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in that day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. God didn't say anything about touching it. So I go back to go back to this verse, and I notice that Eve said, and we should not touch it. So it's interesting that this painting, it shows her reaching for it. And I can see her almost standing there going, and kind of like with her finger going, and then just touch it with one finger, and going, okay, I didn't die. Uh, she's kind of testing the waters, you know, like you stick your foot in the water, see how cold it is. So she touched it and nothing happened. And now, so now Satan sees this and he goes, did God really say what he said? So uh, he's putting doubts into her mind. And I can see this kind of playing out. And so, uh, so he continues with this particular lie he's doing. And just a few things about uh, uh, about an, uh, I found an interesting uh, parallel commandment that, that God gave in Exodus 19. I thought I'd share uh, 19, 12, and 13 uh, because uh, God did a similar thing. And I wonder if anybody crossed that line. Uh, but this is the uh, 
scene at Mount Sinai when Moses went up on the hill and God made a commandment. And he said, and thou, and thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourself that you go not up into the mount or touch the border of it. Whosoever touches the mount shall be sh surely put to death. There shall not a hand touch it, but it shall surely be stoned or shot through, whether it be beast or man. It shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, thou shalt come up to the mount. This is a commandment that God gave that only Moses was allowed to go up to the mountain and not the people with him. And so uh, God was pointing that out. And I guess kind of an interesting parallel uh, that uh, Eve here is the, God never said you couldn't eat, uh, you couldn't touch it. He, he said he couldn't eat it. Uh, so, but uh, I can, I can see Satan in his mind going, aha, I got an open. So let's introduce some doubt. And so let's go to verse four. And the, and the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Now, come on. You know, did that old plea. But God doth know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Ooh, enticement. Verse 6, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and that a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So I can see when she took the bite and she really didn't die, she goes, Hey, Adam, guess what? Come here. Got something for you to try out here. <laughs> We had to say, we seem to say a same similar tactic uh, that uh, that uh, Satan likes to use too. And I got some verses out of order here. In First Timothy two fifteen, oh, and just to point out the fact that uh, Eve was deceived here, uh, but Adam was not, and uh, and uh, Paul. Uh, uh, reminds us of this. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in, tr in the transgression. So that uh, it's mainly wanted to point out that Adam was not deceived. Uh, he did it by free will. And that's and that's and that's basically why, uh, at least under the curse, uh, the male and the man is the one that carries that sinful gene uh, down through history. So welcome to this world, uh, guys. Uh, we're, the, we're the ones carrying the sin nature. But because women are born of a man and a woman, they, that's how they get it also. <laughs> so uh, it doesn't it doesn't exclude the ladies, but uh, uh, it just means that when it comes to, and that's why Jesus could be born of a virgin, uh, because he had no sin. Uh, and it, he was not, he didn't have the male gene in him, uh, a human male. But because it was also because Eve, uh, was uh, deceived. And we're going to see when we talk about the punishment uh, that God's punishment on Eve was a little different than what his punishment was on Adam. But I can see the same tactic when Jesus was tempted. Uh, uh, it's interesting how Satan, uh, Satan has a way of trying to twist words. And it's interesting how Jesus responds. So I want to read through Matthew 4. Uh, it's 1 through 11. And it's the famous temptation of Christ. Then was Jesus led up in the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones be made bread. And he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up to the holy city and seeth him on a pinnacle under the temple. And he said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in that their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time they dash their foot against the stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. And said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. 
And then Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. But I love the fact that when Jesus uh, when Jesus was tempted, uh, he, re he replied back to Satan with all the things that God said in the Bible about certain what he was being asked. And this is that famous verse, the next, uh, 1 John 2, 16, uh, that talks about that. And this is what the verse I was talking about earlier. Uh, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Uh, so that uh, uh, whenever you're enticed uh, by anything visually or any kind of lust of the flesh uh, or pride, God hates pride. Uh, that that's a uh, those are all things that uh, that uh, will get you in trouble with the world. That's what the world seeks after. So just like I said, just the fact that uh, through deception, Eve was kind of uh, led astray, and that uh, and that God picks up on that. And one of the points is Satan will always try to hit us in our in our in our biggest weakness. For the attack, so like Jesus and Matthew, we need to be read up on the word to be ready to know the wiles of the devil. Uh, we need to know our Bibles so that we're able to counteract the, the will of the devil. And uh, I love the phrase, you know, this passage over in Ephesians 6. So let's look through it real quick about how we deal with the with Satan, how we should uh, be strong against uh, what he's going to try to do to us. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And, yet, and that's basically saying that if you meet some evil uh, in a person, most likely they're being backed by some kind of demonic uh, influence uh, and that uh, and, and it's not always that person so we got to try to separate the person from the action and realize that uh, this is a very fallen world and until you have the Jesus Christ in your heart you haven't got a, a chance uh, to uh, win against Satan so it, uh, I try to keep that in mind too that uh, some of the people we meet uh, you know when particularly particularly uh, really uh, evil people uh, that's really Satan behind them, driving them. And if we could ever get through to that, a great example, I didn't, I didn't include in this study, but a great example is that uh, when Jesus was over by the tombs over in uh, Satsuri G, Gagira or something like that, and this man came out of the tombs and he was actually possessed by over, uh, I think it says a legion, which is like a couple of hundred, uh, a couple of thousand actually uh, demons were indwelling him, and that uh, uh, and that Jesus uh, uh, he was actually so feared that he was so strong that he could kill people and he would break through chains if they tried to chain him up or anything like that. And Jesus, once he got him uh, got all the demons out of him, he was really a nice guy and uh, went back and uh, and lived a, a great life in the city that uh, uh, was he was tormenting as a uh, as. Okay, continuing here in Ephesians 6.13. Wherefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day and have done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, it's making sure you're studying your Bible every day. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you should be able to quench all the fiery diets of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Here's my favorite one here. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication of all saints. I call that the heavy artillery. Uh, it's a term... Uh, I was in the military and one of my jobs was to call in air support. Uh, let's say that we were getting ready to take over a certain piece of land, that we would uh, we would have artillery come in and fire on the enemy. 
uh, and get them and do as much damage as we could to their their uh, to their equipment, so that when we came through, that they would most likely surrender, uh, and they would give up fairly e easily. Uh, fighting against them, kind of soften them up with the heavy artillery. That's how I look at prayer. Prayer is our way of bringing in God into the situation. And if we pray up and uh, uh, in every situation, then at least we know we got God on our side when we go into any situation. So we have the deception that Satan has her in doubt of what God said. So she gives in and the rest is history. But honestly, haven't we all been there when it comes to temptation? Like us, I'm sure Eve was forgiven. I think we'll see her in heaven for sure. Uh, she has just much, much right to, speak, uh, to be forgiven as uh, all of us who made similar mistakes. Because how many commandments have we broken? She only had one. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but uh, it only takes one. Uh, all you got to do is break one of God's commandments saying you're a, you're, a, you're a sinner. Nobody is perfect. So, verse 7. Maybe we're only going to finish seven verses. Let's... Notice here that, we, that they may close the vegetation because they won't be good enough. And God shows us in verse 21 that only by the shedding of innocent blood are our sins forgiven. The future prophecy of Jesus' blood shed for many for the remission of sin. Uh, so I just thought I'd show you real quick. Uh, we're uh, jumping ahead to verse 21. Uh, because they had made, uh, they basically had taken leaves and made clothes out of them. Because now they were, now they felt they they could tell they were naked, and it, uh, so they wanted to cover up. And this is where it gets into the idea that uh, maybe that they were actually clothed in light, and as soon as they sinned, they lost that or greatly diminished. Uh, that's what I believe. And so it wasn't that they uh, that they could tell before that they were naked. Now they can tell. And I kind of go into a couple of scenarios, and uh, we'll do this tomorrow. Uh, but it, uh, a couple of scenarios of, because uh, the words that are uh, used in the Bible actually talked about being ashamed. So they realized after they had done it that uh, what they had done was wrong. And so that they were naked in as much as they were ashamed. But I think they were also physically naked. And, uh, and now they knew it. So at verse 21, I... Uh, <clears throat> Under Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. Uh, so he actually killed an innocent animal to get to get the coats that they were going to wear uh, to cover them. And this is symbolic of uh, until Jesus died on the cross, uh, that uh, each uh, that sacrifices had to be made to the Lord uh, to cover their sin. Uh, basically, all it did was push it forward another year, and it, uh, by the uh, by the uh, shedding of blood. Uh, that uh, your your sins can be uh, it was symbolic to show that uh, that because they had committed that sin and that God had commend uh, commanded them to not to do it that they would die that uh, uh, that now that somebody had to blood had to be shed uh, for them for this for this uh, for this uh, breaking this commandment this covenant that God had given them. Think about it. He only gave him one rule. <laughs> Don't eat from that tree. That's going to be even worse for Satan uh, in the long run. And I'm talking about what I, the, the remission of sins over in Matthew 26, 28. But this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Uh, so that Jesus, when he uh, is going to, when he died on the cross and shed his blood, because he was sinless, uh, he was our perfect sacrifice. And he took upon himself all the sin of uh, past, present, and future sins by everyone. He paid the price. So basically this ends the... Uh, uh, so we're entering into another dispensation here too. The dispensation of conscience. Uh, they now know uh, they are they are sin and they tried to hide themselves. And boy, are we guilty of that. We love to avoid discipline as a child and try to justify it uh, to lessen the punishment. Well, when it comes to God, he sees all. And now hiding from him is not possible. And so I just... Uh, let 
Okay, Dana, why why other verses in weird order? I forgot to put these verses in there. We'll pick up here tomorrow. We're already past 30 minutes. And I will pick up here tomorrow. So let's end with a prayer. Thank you, Lord, so much uh, for this time to get to look in your word. And thank you and help me to uh, prepare uh, for uh, uh, the lessons to come. And we give you all the praise and thanks. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. You have a great day. And we will talk again tomorrow. Hope that was beneficial. We found out a little bit more about our adversary, the, uh, the devil. And it, uh, he's nobody to mess around with. He has power that we uh, we can't understand, even though he's fallen. And he still has a lot of power. Uh, matter of fact, that uh, uh, even through the New Testament, uh, even angels would not uh, dare uh, go against him. That They always called on the Lord uh, to uh, fight the battles against Satan himself. Uh, so it's not something to uh, mess around with. That's why I, I get concerned about people who get into too much of the dark arts and things like uh, tarot card readings or uh, Ouija boards or anything along that lines. They call that an open. And uh, it, it's a way to allow Satan in uh, to our lives. And so careful because he is very deceitful. And uh, uh, there's th thousands of stories of people that... Uh, got into the dark side of uh, life thinking that was going to be going to get some kind of power out of it, like witches and all the, uh, the Wiccans and all these different agencies. That's all dark, dark science. Uh, and it's real. It's really real. Satan is real. Uh, so that uh, it's not somebody to mess around with. Okay. So I'll continue this lesson tomorrow. Have a great day.